What happened in the sprint shootout for the Chinese Grand Prix? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the P1 podcast with Matt and Tommy. Although today uh, it's Alex and Tommy, uh, as I'm joined by Alex Jakes. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me, mate. Very nice to have you on board. Matt is stuck on a flight in China. I say stuck on a flight, flying home,、uh, which is a very odd thing that he's flying home from a Grand Prix. Um, but yeah, if you were around on Twitch earlier, you'll have seen that、um, as Matt wasn't there, I put a, a picture of him,、uh, one of his classic shocked reaction faces、uh, next to me, which ended up being very accurate. Yeah, the good thing is if Charles Leclerc's car breaks down, we won't have to like, do anything different. <gasps> is that Charles? Charles in the wall. Matt, how do you feel? Charles in the wall. Really? You're that shocked? Yeah, wow. What a session.、Uh, did you enjoy that one? Oh, it was, it was one of those sessions where you don't really feel like you're in the commentary box. You feel like you're in the living room. You suddenly get transported back to being 10 all over again because when you've got so many good drivers in the mix and it, the, the rain's a great leveler and you just get to see them soaring away at the steering wheel, you know, as soon as the rain comes down and they've only had one practice session and it was in the dry, you knew you were going to get an epic session. But that was just terrific fun. It really was. I've missed seeing, I've just missed that feeling of not know, knowing who's going to get pole. It could have been anyone、uh, towards the end. It was absolutely、uh, crazy. And the first question we've got is actually from O2 Rachel Rebecca that says, Can it rain every week, please? Would we like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. I mean, I think the thing is, Formula One, for certain parts of qualifying, is so close. And so on a knife edge. And then sometimes, well, at the start of qualifying this year, it's been, and then Max just delivers in Q3. But you know that you've got so many talented drivers in the field to get a session where they all can press together. And then on one lap for it to be Alonso, another lap for it to be Hamilton, another lap for it to be Lando, Perez in the mix. You had Bottas on the front row for one occasion. I love it when they're living on their instincts. So, yeah, if we could have it rain for more qualifying sessions, I would tick that box immediately. It can go one of two ways in qualifying, where,、mm. and I think this time we had that absolute perfect sweet spot because we've unfortunately had it before where if the rain comes after everyone set their lap, where you've got, you know, Max at the top, Perez second, the Ferraris、yeah. or whatever, and then it basically just means that the whole rest of the session is completely irrelevant because it's, it's rained and no one's going to do anything. Um, whereas this was, this was perfect because we had, you know, we had the session where it was just drizzling slightly, and then we got a full wet session where, like you say, it was changing every single time. I think that's what, what made it so good.、Uh, so, more of that, please, Formula One. Let's start with SQ1 then,、uh, which was dry. So, I guess it is, it's crazy to say this year, but Alpine being out is not really a surprise now. Williams may be.、Uh, Surprising how low they are down the order,、uh, particularly Alban.、Uh, what, what do you make of Williams this year? Because they're, they're struggling a bit this weekend. They're struggling a bit this weekend. I also think the point that Williams are going through a really tough time. Williams have got to go through this tough time in order to be properly competitive in the future. You can't build a Formula One team around trying to finish seventh and hope that Alex Alban can put in another incredible drive. I think it's. Short term pain for a long term gain.、Uh, at least they're hoping so, because if they, they've removed the car's inherent strength of straight line speed, if you suddenly finish 12th everywhere, it doesn't matter that you've opened up the window. So,、uh, tough day for them. Only one practice session, but、uh, Sergeant only a tenth away from Alban. Slightly encouraging for him, although he's obviously at the back, but he'll take being a tenth away. I think if this was to continue into the second half of the season, then I think they might question their approach. But at the moment, they're just getting through the races. Once they've got that spare chassis, once they've got more parts, everyone will relax and,、uh, and they will hope to target the points again. But tough day. One driver I really don't want to talk about is Yuki Tsunoda、uh, down in P19. Now, Matt's not here, so I can、I'm、roast him and, and get very annoyed at him. He. His biggest flop this year, he's had four from four, and this week he predicted Sonoda would be the biggest flop. And sure enough, he's just、uh, supposedly just forgotten 
uh, how to do qualifying because that that has been the thing that he's been so strong at um, this this year. Um, not really sure what what happened to Yuki. He had a poor um, you know poor first lap and then just didn't didn't get it together, did he? I guess for Yuki, he's been building his momentum all the way through. Maybe the change in format, you've got to improvise a little bit more, and that's interrupted him. It's about the only thing that's gone wrong with his year, really, this year. So P19, he'll be one glad that that's the, the sprint qualifying and not the real qualifying. Now, we didn't get any rain in the session, but we did get a fire, um, <laughs> as we did in FP1, which was very bizarre. Um, a question from Mr. Idiot says, how is it possible that the grass only catches fire during the F1 sessions? Now, I believe this is something to the sparks. Yeah, indication from the FIA is the sparks are flying off the cars and uh, igniting the grass. That's a sentence I've never said uh, with Formula One. Uh, yeah, it's an unusual one. Uh, that's not conclusive, but that's the FIA's best guess at the moment. Um, very strange for it to happen. And I've seen that before. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking, like, I've, no, I've never seen that at all. Uh, an odd one that it's never happened around this circuit before, but this is the first time that we've had the ground effect cars around Shanghai. So occasionally you're going to get a bit of a bit of a turn up and uh, the grass on fire on an apex, definitely a turn up. So on to uh, the start of the rain, I guess, uh, SQ2 uh, out of that session were Russell Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Ricardo and Stroll. Uh, biggest shock there, I guess, is George Russell. Uh, does it sum up Mercedes this year and their difficulty with maybe understanding their car that i think both of them looked pretty bad in sq2 and then hamilton almost sticks it on on pole for for sq3 that that car just seems to change so much um like like no other where sometimes they're quick sometimes they're not they say it after every practice session we don't know what's going on oh it's terrible oh it's actually really good and it, they're just, they do just seem like all over the place with their, their performance and not really understanding what, what that car's doing. I still think they will. The, the, the problem for them becomes once you understand the car, once you sort the correlation, if it's still not in the ballpark, if it's still not challenging at the front of the field, then you're, you've just done uh, a job that's in arrears to the front running teams. Every single race that they don't understand the car, they're losing development time. They're losing the ability to go down a path of development. And remember, you have to choose your development so carefully in the cost cap era that it's not like when they were all dominant before where they could go, right, we're going to do one development down this path, one development down this path. You've got to be so careful with where you place your resources at the moment. Um, and I think you said it perfectly. I think it sums up where they are for the time being, but I do think they could have a McLaren-like resurgence in the second half of the year if they understand what they've got underneath. Because the numbers are saying one thing and the lap times are saying another. Haas, of course, doing a, another brilliant job. We've said it before that uh, 12th and 13th would be you know, an amazing performance. And it looks like they, they actually are kind of getting it sorted in the races now, so they could have a, a very nice sprint indeed. Ricardo ahead of... Um, Sonoda, which is obviously good for him after the struggles that he's been having. And Stroll, um, you know, he's again in qualifying. That seems to be the thing that lets him down the most with his performances. I know, you know he gets a lot of a lot of criticism, but uh, I think it is it always seems to be that, that qualifying performance um, that puts him on the back foot. And then, you know, already being that, that far down in a sprint, uh, it's going to take take a lot for him to come through the field i think from there he's a driver that does so well in those mixed conditions he's been on pole in turkey he's been on the front row in really wet conditions in italy in the past that's an opportunity missed for him um he would have just wanted the rain earlier in the session uh because i think if he'd been in the mix with alonso uh in the in the wet later on he, he could well have mixed it at the front strange how that works strange how the changing condition can bring out a totally different side of the driver but in the dry at the moment he's just not got the understanding of the car one team that we've not mentioned so far which we normally have by now uh is kick salber because they both made it through which is very impressive uh f1 av geek has asked right place right time for kick salber or genuine pace uh probably a little bit of column a a little bit of column B. yeah i think, <laughs> I think very uh, much so. <laughs> in in that situation <laughs> but has got form around here uh, it's taken pole position around this circuit in the past. And you knew that Joe Guan Yu was going to... I just... He was always going to find something. I think you speak to drivers about their home events. They either find it a burden or they find it uh, fuel. 
And he, I think from the very start, was always going to find it fuel. I think to start your journey with this race in the grandstand, to then basically pack up your childhood and go all in on a racing dream by going to the European karting scene, like he did, I think he was always going to dig deep for that. Um, it had been very easy to, to, to fall away in those conditions. I absolutely love, I think, the, the picture of... Joe Guan Yu is absolutely brilliant in the in the grandstand, seeing seeing someone as a fan, you know, waving an Alonso flag, and then for him to be there racing against him is absolutely uh, amazing. So let's get on to SQ3. Those wet conditions for SQ3, uh, incredibly slippery. Uh, it takes a lot to see, uh, you know, drivers fighting the car that much. We've not seen many Max Verstappen mistakes in the last three years and he probably did more in that session than <laughs> has done in the last three years it was uh, a crazy session Lando fastest in a very confusing way so Lewis Hamilton had gone fastest he was the only guy that was on track everyone else had you know got the checkered flag next to their name they couldn't set another lap and he crossed the line and then went and then it, it appeared Lando's lap got reinstated the second Hamilton crossed the line. So Hamilton was like, oh, this will be interesting to see. And then it was like, second? Wait, wait, how How have you gone slower <laughs> than your previous yeah. uh, when no one else was left on the track? So uh, a very confusing session. Um, how did that How did that go in the commentary box for, <laughs> for you with, with that one? So you have, you have two parts of it in a session like that. Uh, you have part number one, which is you just love it, right? The, you desperately want to be in the commentary box for those moments because it's brilliant. It's chaotic. You don't know who's going to deliver, but you do know that whoever delivers at the end is going to be a really worthy pole position. They're going to have had to be quick all the way through. There's going to be a few. It's just all the ingredients we love about Formula One. Then he put it in the, he'd gone off and I'm thinking, okay, so we'd seen it, we'd seen it been deleted and race control, credit to them, put the reason that they'd, deleted it so there was no ambiguity uh it comes up in purple purple font on the text and i'm like okay so and it said for that lap and the start of the next lap and i was like oh i said that's a real disappointment for him and then there was clearly a bit of arguing going on on the team radio so we knew that it was in the balance uh mclaren reported that it might get reinstated so you're, you're just calling what you see. But as you say, Tommy, it's the exact moment. So he was reinstated at the exact... And, and your brain is doing so many things whilst you're talking. So it's, uh, it's great fun. Uh, that was a confusing moment in a great session. But ultimately, he kept all four wheels on the racetrack for the duration of that lap. There's nothing that can be seen in the race director's notes that I've looked at. So... Lovely confusion in the wet. It's what we love. <laughs> so you've kind of already answered this next question from uh, at Tom Takeson. Uh, can you explain how Lando's lap was reinstated? I'm very confused. So yeah, uh, understanding then is that he obviously went off on his penultimate run where he ran wide into the gravel, uh, which meant that he messed up the exit of the final corner. Uh, and then he started his other lap, stayed on the track for that entire lap, but because he had gone off at the previous corner, nor sometimes that can invalidate your lap. And I guess McLaren's argument, and one that I personally do agree do agree with, and I think is a fair justification, is that you you're not gaining advantage from that. You know, Lando's. I think common sense has prevailed there because having his rear tires on a gravel trap for the start of his qualifying lap is not going to is not the quickest way <laughs> to do a pole position lap i think in that situation when the track limit is defined by gravel i think it is fine to leave it to the perimeters of the racetrack and lando quite rightly i think starts at the front of the field because his actual push lap was completely legal all four wheels within the white lines yeah i do i, I do think there's an argument there for a bit of common sense um they chose to obviously uh, remove a lot of uh, Max's times, which is what, what made it so tense towards the end. Still managed fourth, but I don't think any of us would have predicted that he would be two seconds off um, at, at the end there. Um, yeah, crazy. That, that, wh why do you think that was? One of the key things that you will hear in these conditions, you have to go out and use your last reference point as 
as the limit. Now, obviously, the track conditions have changed hugely. So then you start adapting to what's in front of you. But you have no reference at all in your head. Everything is being recalibrated at every single corner. If, if that had continued on, if we'd had 20 minutes at the end there, Max would have dialed it in. Max would have found an answer. And then you get into the repeat laps, which is when a driver's overall talent in the wet is shown. But when it's chop, 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 OK, I've gone deep at six. I've gone off at the final corner. I've gone here. I've gone there everywhere. It's so tough, but it's what makes that format so enjoyable. And for all the rain masters in the past, there are still days where even the greats have spat. Schumacher, one of the greats of all time, hit the wall on the first lap, Monaco 96. Hamilton, Hockenheim in 2019. Just occasionally you have a day in the wet where you're two seconds off. Formula One, <laughs> a strange name to pronounce. Uh, where did Lewis and Fernando get that extra lap time? Uh, and I think you've basically answered that question with their Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso uh, <laughs> at its wet. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the, like, like you said at the start of the show, it is the, the great leveller and we know what Hamilton and Alonso can do in the wet, right? That's just all of their experience and class showing. Um, that's what happens when you have the longest ever Formula One career. That's what happens if you've got the most titles. You know your way around a session like that. Um, and you have more of a reference than even a you know a, a great driver like Max Verstappen. Just the experience there is worth so much, and yeah, they were they were using all of their armory in that session. Absolutely, I think we'll we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for uh, joining me on this. Uh, before you leave, uh, I want one prediction from you about who's going to win the sprint because it could be someone different with Max down in fourth, or is it going to be Max? <laughs> Uh, what do we got? We got 19 laps. It's one of the easier tracks to overtake. I don't think Lewis can do it. Lando looked good in practice over one lap. I still think it's going to be Max. Uh, but I think it would be really entertaining. It could be close. Push... Yeah. You could argue after you know the start of the show, maybe me being a bit pessimistic and saying that we wish uh, this was actual qualifying. You could argue actually there's more of a chance that Max might not get this one because yeah. it's a shorter race and the fact that Lando has that buffer of Hamilton and Alonso as well uh, at the start of Max to get through, how quickly he can get through. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, thank you very much, Alex, for, for joining us. And uh, we'll be back on Twitch tomorrow at the very early hours and you'll be uh, up early as well commentating. And uh, we'll catch you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.